Hey guys, it's Woodwind Wednesday, and welcome to my very first YouTube Q&A. Let's dive right in. Double Domino asks, what instrument did you start on and why did you start learning other instruments? So my very first instrument was alto sax in fourth grade at the young age of 10. Uh, after that, when I started taking private lessons, my private lesson teacher was all about how you have to play clarinet and flute as a saxophone player which is true for professionals, but for hobbyists is absolutely not true. By the time I was in high school, I was playing alto sax, flute, and clarinet, and I was pretty serious about all of them. I really loved classical music, I really loved jazz, I was playing competitively in a classical saxophone quartet, and I was playing in orchestra, and I was also playing in big bands. Once I got to college, I realized that for my career, I really wanted to do Broadway, so I started to work on oboe, although I was really bad at oboe in college. And then once I got to New York to try to pursue my career as a saxophonist and a Broadway player, I realized that both of those things are really hard. And so what I did to try to get into Broadway was I was like, what if I try to be a substitute player on the hardest book I can find? Because certainly that person needs substitutes. And I found the Lion King Read One book, which is flute, piccolo, and 11 different world flutes. And I decided I was going to learn them all. And after two years of trying, I finally got the opportunity to sub on Broadway. At that point, I was playing all the saxes, flutes, clarinets, oboe, and a lot of world flutes. And then I started reading all my YouTube comments. There were a lot of really positive ones, but there were also a lot of ones that seemed not so happy about the fact that I was excluding bassoon and that there was no bassoon, and that was because I didn't play or own a bassoon. So after a lot of thought, I saved up a bunch of money and I bought a bassoon and here we are. Joppy Vermeer asks, which instrument is the hardest? Before I answer that, I have to say, I really don't love these kinds of questions, but I do get them a lot because people want to know kind of what's the best or they want to have bragging rights or they want to feel like they've worked the hardest when in reality, it's what you make of it. Saxophone can be the easiest instrument if you're just trying to make noise out of it. But if you're trying to play like Coltrane, it's a little bit harder. That being said, I know you guys just want a simple answer to that question. So here's the answer. Shakuhachi is the hardest woodwind instrument by far. This thing is really hard to even get a sound out of. You have to be able to read Japanese somewhat to be able to play the traditional music, and it only has five holes even though you're usually expected to play chromatically on it. Now I know you guys are probably also looking for an answer for more western woodwinds, and that answer would be oboe. Oboe reeds are just impossible to deal with. Bassoon also has a lot of technical difficulties, but oboe reeds are a nightmare. All that being said, it really doesn't matter which instrument is the hardest. It matters what you do with the music that you play. Playing the hardest instrument doesn't make you the best or the most honorable. It doesn't really mean anything. It just means that your instrument was hard to learn. Connor Steven asks, do you make your own oboe reeds? If not, what brand do you use? I do not make my own oboe reeds. I just don't have time to. I buy them from a great oboe player named Tamara Winston, and I'll link to her website in the description. Evan Bonanno Music asks, what other instruments have you tried apart from woodwinds? I play a little bit of piano and an even littler bit of percussion, but besides that, I'm just a woodwind player. Each instrument is a lifetime of practice, so I've got a few lifetimes of work ahead of me. Jack White asks, how long does it usually take you to arrange projects like the Misty Mountain one? So honestly, I have no clue, but if I had to guess, I'd say about 50 hours. I'm doing a bunch of arranging and then recording, video recording, editing, mixing, mastering. It's a lot of work. Bass EVG asks, which woodwinds do you think look the coolest in your opinion? That's actually a pretty easy one for me. This thing looks the coolest. Flossing Jonah asks, do you have any plans of purchasing a contrabassoon anytime in the near future? The short answer is I don't. But the long answer is that I really want to. I just can't afford one at all. But at some point, if my Patreon grows enough and I am able to afford it, I will absolutely buy a Contra Bassoon. Heck, I'll even make you guys your own viewer request video and I'll let you name the Contra Bassoon. Oculus Invictus asks, I read one of your comments on a previous video that you're opposed to having woodwindists learning clarinet first. Even as a sarcastically elitist clarinetist, I am fine with learning about any instrument in any order, but still found the comment interesting. Would you care to elaborate on this topic? So just to clear up any confusion, I am not at all opposed to someone learning clarinet first. What I am opposed to is someone being forced to learn clarinet first because they want to learn saxophone. At least in the American education system, that's become a sort of common thing. And I get it because there are a lot more kids who probably want to play saxophone than clarinet. But if there's a kid who's passionate about saxophone and then they're forced to play an instrument that they're not particularly passionate about, that flame of passion might be diminished or extinguished because they're forced to play an instrument that they're not excited about. That being said, I suppose if your goal is to learn all the woodwinds, clarinet is a pretty good place to start. But if your goal is to learn saxophone, clarinet embouchure is going to mess with saxophone embouchure unless you're trying to be a classical saxophonist. Octahedroni asks, are you planning to do videos on how to write for oboe slash English horn slash bass flute slash bassoon? 
already out, coming out in March, pretty similar to alto flute, so I might combine it with something in the future and coming out in the summer. Also, Steven asks, if you couldn't play woodwind instruments or do music for a living, what would you be doing instead? Honestly, I actually used to be really into theoretical physics when I was in high school. Uh, I don't know anything about theoretical physics these days, but it probably would be that. Either that or glass blowing. actually. I think glass blowing is really, really cool. Piku Sewix asks, do you consider uploading your YouTube covers on Spotify? I don't have any plans right now to upload my covers to streaming platforms, but they are all available as downloads on my Patreon. Ashes to Ashmir asks, any general tips for string players trying to arrange for wind slash brass? Honestly, not too many things because string players are somewhat melodic single line players, which is the same as winds and brass. The only thing I would look out for is make sure you're remembering that wind players have to breathe and also don't overuse them as pads. You can certainly have long held out harmony notes that are great, but if you have it for a hundred measures straight, which I've seen, you're just gonna tire out your musicians and you probably wanna put that either in the rhythm section or in the string section. Also be careful of articulations. When players speak a little bit of a different language when it comes to articulations, they still more or less mean the same thing, but you're gonna find that wind players interpret articulations a little bit differently than string players do. Creo en la música pregunta, ¿Cómo tiene tantísimos instrumentos tan caros? My apologies, my Spanish isn't as good as it could be, so I'm gonna do this one in English. So believe it or not, I am not filthy rich. I know that all these instruments are very expensive and I have spent a lot of money on them, but I've spent a lot of money on them over about almost two decades now. I was very fortunate that my parents were able to buy me an alto saxophone, a flute, and a clarinet, but the rest I've accumulated over time by spending just about all my money on them. And actually the alto sax, the flute, and the clarinet were all of my gifts combined from about the time I was 13 to 18, uh, I came up with the idea that I'm like, what if I can combine all my holiday presents and birthday presents into one mega gift? And my parents actually went for it. But besides those three instruments, I really hustled for all my instruments. Um, a good example is the first thing I got after those, which was my tenor saxophone. In college, I auditioned to play on a cruise ship and I got the gig. And they said, great, you got the gig, you got a tenor sax, right? And I was like, absolutely I do. I had never touched a tenor saxophone. I think I touched one once at that point. I think I held someone else's tenor saxophone, but I'd never played a tenor saxophone. But I figured it's pretty close to alto saxophone. And I also figured that even though I didn't really have any money, the gig was going to pay $6,000 and the saxophone only cost $4,000. So it was $2,000 on a free saxophone. And so I've spent pretty much all my money, got the saxophone, and then had no money for the cruise ship. And here's the funny part, in the first week of being on the ship, my saxophone stand broke with my saxophone on it, which is the worst nightmare. My mouthpiece got completely destroyed, so I had to take a whole trip to a repair shop in Barcelona, and the guy didn't speak any English, and I didn't really speak any Spanish at the time. And in the end, my bank account got below $10 to buy this mouthpiece so I could keep playing my cruise ship gig. And honestly, since then, I've sort of kept making purchases in that sort of vein. If I could afford an instrument for, and I had a reason to buy it, I would just buy it. So pretty soon I bought a Barry Sax, and then a bass clarinet made sense. And you know, just slowly, slowly collecting these instruments. And then I discovered world flutes. And the thing about world flutes is that because they don't have a mechanism, they're usually pretty cheap, often less than $200. So if you get one gig on a Bonsuri flute, you have a free Bonsuri. And if you get two gigs on that Bonsuri flute, you can buy two Bonsuri flutes. And so on and so on until you take this picture. So would I recommend collecting instruments like this? Probably not. Um, not unless you have a big appetite for risk and really hustling. Um, uh, I definitely had some ups and downs, times where I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pay rent and I really never wanted to sell any of my instruments. My only piece of advice would be that intermediate instruments can end up causing you to waste money in the long term. If you can afford or save up to buy the professional instrument, you're actually going to save money. Javen Kinyanjui asks, why were you gone for so long? So that's a pretty fair question. The last video I posted was in 2018 with Hedwig's theme. And since then I haven't posted anything until I started again in February. The short answer is I just kind of got busy and I didn't have time to juggle YouTube with everything else I was doing. Besides playing gigs around New York, I also record here in my home studio for video games, TV, film, commercials, and albums. So I thought I would take this opportunity to give you guys a little taste of what I've been keeping busy with this whole time. Right after I posted Hedwig's theme back in 2018, I got a chance to record some tracks for Star Wars galaxy's edge at disney world 
it was nothing too central to the park but it is pretty cool to know that as you're walking around you do hear me playing tenor sax and barry sax and flute and a couple other instruments but the real thing that probably took me away from youtube is that for most of 2019 i was playing on the broadway musical be more chill i had a really fun book where i got to play tenor sax barry sax flute alto recorder tenor recorder keyboards and vocoder um, it was orchestrated by Charlie Rosen, who's a great orchestrator and friend, and it was really fun to play every night. When I wasn't playing on Be More Chill, I was doing a good bit of recording at home. I did a handful of video games like Hearthstone Rise of Shadows, Elsinore, Kind Words, and Remnant from the Ashes, but I also got to do some other stuff like recording for Disney Tokyo, and I even got to play sax in a Folgers commercial. The best part of Towards the end of 2019, I got to be in front of the camera in the series finale of Madam Secretary, which was really cool and I'd never done anything like that. And I also got to play some sax on the background tracks. And then 2020 actually started out strong. I got to record for the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt interactive Netflix special, and I got to make my Carnegie Hall debut with Titus Burgess. And then the pandemic happened and everything shut down. But I was very lucky that I was able to continue with my home studio work. I was able to get this insane screenshot from playing on Saturday Night Seder, and I was also playing with Chad LB's virtual big band. I also got to do some kind of unique stuff, like I got to play on the new Picture Start logo, and I got to both arrange and record horns for a Get Out the Vote campaign featuring Michelle Obama, which was insane. And I was able to work on a couple video games like Ark Knights and the upcoming PS5 game Canna Bridge of Spirits. And just last week, I got to overdub Bobby Moynihan's bassoon playing on the 8th episode of Mr. Mayor. Sanbulan14 asks, How did you become part of the 8-Bit Big Band? So the 8-Bit Big Band is another project that's been keeping me busy during my hiatus. For those of you who don't know, it's the brainchild of arranger, orchestrator, and band leader Charlie Rosen. In the 8-Bit Big Band, he takes classics from the video game songbook and arranges them for big band and sometimes larger ensembles. I became involved in the 8-Bit Big Band because I've actually been working with Charlie for years. Um, we go all the way back to college, and once I moved to New York, he started calling me for all sorts of things. Um, and honestly, the 8-Bit Big Band is one of the most fun and also high-level musical projects I've ever worked on. It's so much fun. The band is insane. And if you haven't checked it out, the link is in the description. Go check it out right now. You won't regret it. And that's it for my very first Q&A on YouTube. Um, I really want to thank everyone for leaving all their questions, and I'm sorry I couldn't get to every single one. Now that I'm posting every week on this channel, I want to hear what you guys like and what you guys don't like. If you guys want to see more covers, more talking. Um, so... Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Woodwind Wednesday.